Hello guys, thank you for being here at this late hour. I'll try not to keep everybody too long. I have only 17 slides. So uh, a little bit about us. So for those who don't know, Flight Factor is one of the oldest companies working with for, for X-Plane, at least while making airliners. Uh, we have been on the market since 2012 when we came out with the first really big airliner which had FMC and somewhat in-depth system which was the 777 and that airline is actually being sold uh, up to this day even though it's kind of old. Before that uh, the team was only me and as Philip mentioned uh, <laughs> this morning it was called uh, Ramses Aviation Design Bureau which was a very cool name because I made Russian planes. Um, so at the moment The team uh, consists of about 14 members who live uh, in four or five different countries. We've been working online for 11 years, so we're used to that. We have 14 professional, three, four, I'm sorry, four professional 3D model, modelers, 10 programmers, and for our new generation of pro models, which is our basically our top models, uh, we now have a team of seven advisors who are professional pilots, instructors, um, and even mechanics who currently work on 777 and 787. And yes, we have one 777 rated individual who doesn't fly the actual plane, which is me. So uh, the concept of the new generation of models is to expand what we do in width rather than depth. So instead of going deeper and deeper and basically trying to model uh, how electrons moves, move in wires, we want to give the user an ex a wider experience around the, the aircraft, the flight, and even training. It doesn't mean that you can use the plane for real training, but it means that you can get the experience which pilots get when they undergo the training. So we want to expose the user to new concepts, something that has not been done, at least in our models. We want to build more interactive models where you can <clears throat> interact with the plane in more ways than just to, to fly it. Um, and yes, we want to approximate the training process. So when, when the pilot goes through the training process, he not only learns how to fly the plane, but he also learns how to calculate weight and balance, how to uh, do other things, how to do walk-arounds. And we are kind of trying to expand it even beyond the pilot's experience a little bit into the mechanics experience, but re really, really a little bit. Oops, okay. This thing presses twice. Nope. Okay, so uh, one of the things that I've been able to do is I started flying five years ago. And in those five years, I went through the training in Europe, which was the private pilot, commercial pilot, instrument training, and parallel training in the United States. I did my instrument training with Philip. He was my instructor. And now I am a European ATPL pilot, uh, an FAA commercial pilot, and... Uh, this year I received my triple seven type rating. Most of this was done for, because I wanted to do it, but obviously the triple seven is more than just a wish to fly the plane, which probably will never happen. Uh, I'm a 40 year old pilot with 700 hours experience. Um, but I love the plane and this gives a certain insight which was not there before. There are small things which you learn when you actually learn to fly the plane, when to, you interact with the cockpit, when you interact with, the, um, with your co-pilot, who was obviously much more experienced than I am, and with your instructors. And the idea is to bring all that stuff into the sim. So obviously some things are not possible, but many small details uh, will be there. Another thing is, when you go through training, 
be that the type rating or, or, or different training, you always think, okay, what kind of tools would I like? So when you do your first type rating, you ask the, 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 the school, do you have an FMC trainer? And they tell you, no. Uh, do you have a flow trainer where I can learn the flows before I get into the full flight simulator? And they tell you, yes, here are cardboards with pictures and you can sit and, 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 and practice. So the idea of this new model, of those new models, is to build the tool that I would have wanted as a student pilot uh, when I'm undergoing this training. And that tool might also be useful later for some others, for some other actual students, but the idea is always there. The, the thought, what would I want to have uh, when I'm doing the training? Okay, so the obvious stuff. So I'm not going to tell you uh, about the FMC, about the systems. Um, clearly, we, are we, we, will, we will try to do everything as we did before and deeper and more precise. So uh, for the 777, it's going to be a dual uh, redundant for the 7.8 is a triple FMC system. We'll try to pack in everything that we can into it. Um, in terms of systems, we're trying to model everything, all the physical processes, to the level that a pilot can interact with. So if something is going on that a pilot will never see and it cannot influence the pilot in any way, we'll probably not be modeling that. Otherwise, we'll end up modeling electrons in wires, which is very cool, but doesn't really do anything. Uh, the 3D model, I'll show you some screenshots, some stuff that hasn't been published yet. Uh, we're really trying to push the envelope there. Um, and our 3D designer who does the exterior model is happy. Because every time he says, okay, I'm done, I, I tell him, no, I want more. Uh, this appetite comes when you start eating, as we say, and, and, and it, it has been wild. Flight dynamics. Um, so we have a professional engineer working for us now who is retired, but he, uh, all his life he has been doing flight dynamics for real aircraft. Um, so we're trying to get that as close as possible. And New Austin's model actually allows us to do that without more interventions. So there are interventions that we are going to be doing, but we rely strongly on x for that. Sounds, uh, we have a new, new way of making sounds. Uh, we'll be publishing on that some more detailed information, but we are going to be using F mode and we are going to be using F mode directly without explained. So we are going to be tapping directly into F mode and driving, driving events right from our code. That means we can generate events automatically via code and we can have much more of them because it's, it's not a human who, who has to sit there and, and create them. So it's going to be a more versatile sound and I'm going to have a demonstration for you. Okay, some things that, that I want to show just to show you what kind of depth we are looking at. So for example, when you do your weight and balance calculations, you want you need to know how much, how, uh, what's the weight of the passengers. And each pro program has a different weight and you can set them up sometimes. So here you have the ability to control it as much or as little as you want. So you can just click on uh, ICAO standard and that will just give you the ICAO standard weights. You can choose the summer and winter. You can go into, you can set one weight for each passenger. So you can go with standard policy. Uh, sorry, with custom policy or detailed custom policy, which just will allow you to set what's the weight of each type of passengers. There are four in the cow standard and baggages for each of them. So you can customize this stuff and either fully or not at all. Uh, okay. Continue with weight and balance. Again, you can either, you can, you can put the, the, the zero fuel weight, which you got from your other program or you can go into whatever depth you want. Um, you can set, uh, you can set uh, everything individually and build the plane from manufacturing weight up to your zero fuel weight. So it looks something like this. So you have the ability to choose what kind of chairs you have here, how many rows, 
uh, how many classes from one to three. There are several presets. You can choose whether you have four or three seats in the middle. Uh, the same th goes for the containers here. So this picture has only one type, but there are actually several. You can choose them, you can rotate them, you can fill them what, in, a, in any way you want. And here we start with the manufacturer empty weight. You have those, those liquids, which are also simulated, calculated. They drain over time, so you have to replenish them during, by maintenance action. Uh, and then you have the furnishing. So this, this thing can go into as much detail as you want. Again, this is a lot of fun. Some people will never use it. They will just put in the weight and forget about it. But playing around with the thing is really fun. You can see what happens when you put the passengers here and there and how the weight changes. And you have the zero fuel weight CG here and, and, the, and, the, um, and the takeoff CG there. So it's a lot of fun if you want to play around with this. OK, next thing is failures. So for those of you who know our models, we always had random failures, which you can set. And you can set the, how often they occur. Uh, and we also also always had pilot induced failures, which is something that you as a pilot can do, and the system will fail because you did that. On the triple seven, to be honest, it's pretty hard to break something as a pilot. So unless you really intentionally will go into a manual start mode and and something happens and then you see it and intentionally you don't stop the start, something like that. So the plane takes care of most of the things. Uh, so at the moment, as you can see from this, um, this, this control, uh, we have about 17 pages of 30, which may um, about 500 failures. And I think we're about halfway through. So those are random things. And you can see, uh, you can see here what kind of detail we are going to, we are going for. So you can fail pumps here, cross feeds, spar valves. And there are a lot of very detailed things which can fail, and then there's going to be a, a failure behavior. Now, they can fail randomly, and of course, you can set those times by parameters, so it happens very often or, or, or doesn't, as usual. Uh, Pilot-induced failures are also there. Then we have the scenario-based failures. Uh, we actually don't have a page for that yet, so I, I, I didn't have a, um, a slide. But what you can do is you can set a full scenario of, let's say, well, 10 minutes after crossing 10,000 feet, something happens. Or five miles from some point or, some, or things like that. So you can set a scenario. You can look up a scenario of a real incident or accident, and you can recreate that. Um, and another thing, which will be linked to something in the next slide, is on start failure. You can start the plane with some of the things already failed. Now, those things might be needed or not. The plane has a, um, a minimum equipment list, which we plan to make editable as an airline. You can decide which items on the minimum equipment list are for you and which are not. So in real life, Boeing uh, will give you a master minimum equipment list and you can get it rest more restricted for your airline. So we'll, we'll, we plan to have something like that. And then when you start, you can see, OK, I have, uh, um, I don't know, uh, a light bulb in a, uh, in a laboratory doesn't work. So if you choose it, this thing to be on your email list, then you can fly. If you choose that it's not, then you cannot fly. Uh, so some, some things might be failed. So that means that. You need to check for it. So if you load the plane in a standard scenario, you have to check uh, what works and what doesn't. And that brings us to the exterior inspection. So we have models in X-Plane uh, where the pilot has to go and look at the oil and you know, check the tire pressure. But those are usually models like Cessna or something small. So what we have done is we have realized the full walk around that a 777 pilot is doing. So actually, those are two pages, because it doesn't fit one. 
Uh, this is the right side of the fuselage, and it's the inverted fuselage. So this is basically the left. And then here is the right. So this is like a little checklist where you can push this little, this little button and the camera will fly to the spot. And then you have to check what, what you see. And obviously, each one of those points might have a failure that you need to recognize with your eyes because that's what the pilot does. Uh, you have to look at the specific space and specifically know what you're looking for. You might need to open something, you might not need to. Uh, and then it's like a little checklist which you complete. So usually the pilot does this in, in his head. There is no real checklist where you point each, uh, uh, where you mark each item, but um, we, we realize, realized it like that. And then when you go through the actual checklists, there is an item, uh, exterior inspection, complete. And if it was complete, then you can check it as completed. So you will actually have to look through visual cues. And here comes this thing that I was thinking when I went through the typewriting is the school that taught me, they showed me a video from probably 1982 where this pilot goes around and they show with the camera what he's looking at. And I always thought, oh, that would be great if I could use the VR glasses or just the computer screen and actually see where it is, like where, where you go instead of looking at this pilot who is probably 100 years old now. Uh, so this thing is fully interactive. You can, you can fly the camera, you can open some compartments, um, and you can get a failure which if you miss and take off, you might have a, a, a bigger issue. Something that people wanted a long time is situations. What are situations? So this is the ability to save and then load um, basically the entire state of your aircraft. So we'll see how that works with aircraft in mid-air on, on, on approach. It probably will. It doesn't, does not do it yet. But most systems already um, know how to save themselves. And then you can load the system in the same state. So if something is broken, it will be broken. If something is hot, it will be hot. Um, and so forth. So some things might, might, might reset to default, but the important things, the things that have consequence, uh, you will be able to save and load. And you can, of course, create several of them. And here you see these choices, whether you want to start each flight uh, in a default or a last state. So you know, if, if you have to go uh, and do some stuff, you can just save, save the plane and then load it in the same situation. And that should work. Uh, also, you see here this uh, consumable, so the, the, the plane has more consumables than fuel. So those are oils, um, hydraulic liquids, um, liquids in laboratories, water, uh, brake fluid, the tire, it's, uh, the, the, the tire itself, it's a consumable because they change them. All of that has been modeled, all of them, all of that stuff um, is actually consumed. So even if you start with, with a default situation on reload, uh, you still consume the stuff. And then of course, if you don't, if you don't look after it, then at some point you might, you might get too many cycles on the tire. And then when you land, the tire will burst. And actually the algorithm with the tires is pretty funny. So there is a probability to, to burst the tire on every landing that depends on the amount of G's and the forces when you push the brakes, but it also depends on how, how old the tire is. So the older the tire is, you have kind of more chance to do that, and if the tire bursts, stuff happens. Uh, of course, there are a lot of tires. It's 12 tires per, per gear, but still. Ugh, why does that do that? I'm sorry. All right. Yes. CPDLC and a horse. So I've been asked about this today. Currently, there are, if I'm not mistaken, four or five different systems where you can interact with ATC or with your company using something which in the real world, world is called CPDLC and HARS. Um, so there is one in Watsim, one in Ivao, one in Pilot Edge, and then several separate ones which people use. The idea, and again, I can't promise because it hasn't been done yet, but the idea is the following. The 777 and the 787 have a standard interface for uh, uh, COM pages in the MFD where the pilots can enter, send, and receive messages. Uh, what we want to do is give you the ability to log on to whatever system you are using, uh, probably through the, um, um, through the EFB interface, and then 
all of those systems will be processed and you will see them in this standard interface, like a real pilot. So maybe using ICAO, one page will work and using Vatsim, another, another page will work because their interfaces and their system don't support this or that function. But generally, you will be using the same interface for, for all of that. And hopefully, with time, as the, those systems progress, we can also get this, uh, get more and more functionality out of it because there's quite a lot of things a pilot can do using uh, CPDLC. Okay, ground equipment. So we used to have about six or seven different vehicles that would, would, would be called and, and, and can stand uh, next to the plane and connects somewhere in the vicinity of the correct places. So now we have, I think, so there are two pages, so maybe 25 of those. Basically everything which can possibly be needed during standard operation and they connect correctly. And on the next slide you will see why they have to connect uh, uh, correctly. So we'll have the 3D uh, and function for all of them. So if you, are, you need to replenish your water supply, you, you go and ask for it. And the way you go and ask for it uh, is going to be also uh, more realistic. So you don't, you, you can press here, but what the real pilot does, the real pilot goes to the, on the 777, there is a third CDU, a backup CDU located on the pedestal, and there there is a, there is a communication system where you can call different stations. So you can call the front gear, or you can, you can call the, the, the engine, and there is a call there, and the person can actually pick up. So they, they, they just put a jack there, and then they can hear you. And uh, this is going to work in the same way. So you'll have to establish communication with the ground and establish communication with your cabin crew. And, uh, and then when you, when you push a button here, you will actually hear the captain asking and the ground crew responding in the way that they do in real life. If you remember, if you have any of our old planes, we had one steward. And that steward would be quite annoying. He would try to help you. He would tell you, oh, you are texting with the door open or something like that. And you could call him. Uh, and, uh, and if you would call him enough times, he would get frustrated and, 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 and yell at you and threaten you with uh, emails to Austin Meyer and things like that. Many people don't know that you can actually turn him off. All you need to do is use the audio panel. Uh, but users discovered pretty quickly that if you annoy him enough, he will go and kill himself. And people do that online all the time. They just keep annoying him. <coughs> so now, for the, this plane, at the moment, we have four different voices. They have been significantly improved since that, that computer-generated voice. So it's still computer-generated, but it's a high-quality, those are high-quality voices. And when you interact with the cabin, so you want, to, you want to ask for the passengers to be disembarked, you want to check the doors, you want to call for, it, for a truck, all of that will, well, on options, of course, you can turn it off. All of that will be using voices and you can hear the entire conversation the same way it happens in real life. So, for example, before I can start the engine, I will ask the ground crew whether all my hatches have been closed. And he will actually check and say, yes, it's closed. Or uh, there is the spin that they install for, 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 for when, they, when, when they push back the plane. It's very important to ask whether the pin has been removed. And they actually show you the pin. So all, all of those conversations are, 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 are interesting. And uh, all of them, uh, we, we, you will hear them here. OK, so why is it important to check for the hatches? Because you see all of those. So at the moment. So yeah, you can see here. So this is the aft water, potable water. This is the, if I'm not mistaken, the, um, well, it's the hatch where you suck out the liquid which comes from the lavatory. So yes. Uh, and here we have the uh, pneumatic connections. All of those you can open, you can look inside and you will have the 3D model in there. And the idea is, to bring it from a walk around to a sea check. So on a sea check, it's a mechanical check which they have to do sometimes. And on a sea check, they will, they will roll the plane into a hangar. They will open a lot of things and, and check for a lot of things. So the idea is to push it to a level of a sea check so you can see 
what the plane looks inside, what the plane looks like. Okay, my English is getting worse at this time. Uh, so I can't promise you we'll get that from the start, but the idea is, is, is to go there. And at the moment, I think we have about 40 hatches which you can open. Um, that's where the mechanic that helps us comes in handy. Now, okay, before I go there, uh, uh, in the 777, there's an interesting thing, and I, I hope we can realize that in, in, in the model. If you go into the E and E compartment, which is just behind the gear, and if you crawl inside, you can actually crawl your way into the nose of the plane, around the weather radar, and back. So I guess my guys in Russia are listening now, and they really, they really don't want, the 3D guy really doesn't want to do that. But I think it's very, it's very interesting to have that. Of course, it has absolutely no, no mm, practical use. But again, to get to know the plane, to get closer, to get more experience, this is the, the stuff I think we can do. OK, so in terms of systems, so of course, you, you probably recognize this is a standard um, uh, display for the um, electrical system for the 777. This is what the pilot sees. But the mechanics sees this. Now, on the plane, if you're on the ground or above 10,000 feet, you can actually access this. So, of course, every airline will have a SOP says that the, the, the pilots do not go there, they don't look. But if you, if you really want to, you can push the button and you can look. Now, this has much more information. Now, this has, a, this has two, two meanings. Number one is, again, it's just more immersive experience. So you can go and look. So I see here that uh, my, uh, so I'm load shedding. So the utility buses are off and there is a load shed here. And that's because this generator is not working. Well, it's probably disconnected because it's green, it means it works, but it's just not connected. So the left generator is feeding everything. Uh, but here you can see more. You can see that the load is 94%. You can see that it's a uh, load shed level three. So the 777 has several levels of, of load shedding. So what it will do if it has, has not enough power, it will start disconnecting things in a, on a schedule. And that schedule has seven la layers. And what it will do, it will try. So if, if we are level three, it will try. OK, can I go to level two? What will happen? OK, if I connect that, it will be too much. So I don't. Or you know, I'm still losing power. I'll go to level four. So you can see all this stuff here. Um, this also helps us in development. So instead of having printouts or you know, looking at debug data, I'm actually looking at this when I'm programming this. And the third positive point of this is when you have a bug or you have a report or you think something doesn't work and you want to test, you access this and you send us the picture. Moreover, those pages, if you push this button, they have buttons here for printing it or for sending it or for saving it now printing there is a real printer in the plane and you can print it but those buttons will they will you will be able to use them to save the data and then you can just send us the data and we can look at it so this is a really cool thing uh, i started programming those pages just because I needed something to look at to see how the system works inside. And then I realized it's very cool. It's it, 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 it just like a real plane. Uh, the only thing, we have taken some poetic license here. So an actual airline might order those pages to look a little bit different than another airline. Because I want my mechanic to know something which other airline doesn't want. So those pages, you know, if you look at, at, at a... Um, at a mechanics document, they might look a little bit different. So you might have one extra line on, or, or, or this might not be reported. That's not a bug, that's just our choice. OK, the multi-crew cooperation concept. So when you fly an airliner, they teach you that the most important thing is that you are a crew. There are two people there, and they check on each other. Now. I'm not talking about actually flying as a crew, so this is not about that. Though flying as a crew can be realized via existing, um, existing technology, so we're not going to, to do that. You can use uh, several systems which exist. Uh, all the data refs are there, all the commands are there, you just need to hook them up. The idea here is for you to have the experience of flying in a crew 
when, in fact, you are flying alone. So again, this is something that I wished I had when I was going through the MCC course. MCC is something similar to ATP here in the States. I did it on the Boeing 737 in Air Baltic back home. And they teach you all, all kind of call-outs and what you have to say and how you're supposed to answer. And, and they, they do this to the level of when you wake up at night, if you, and somebody, your wife tells you clear left, you have to say clear right. So this is really like automated. And there are a lot of those things. So when an airplane takes off, it's much more than, uh, you know, hearing the standard um, V1 and rotate. There are much, more, there are a lot of callouts, power set, and you have to check, you see that it's set, you have to say something. So the idea is to try to mimic all of that using the voices of the captain and the first officer. Hopefully, hopefully we'll have that done by the time we ship the plane. Uh, it's quite a complicated thing because it's, it's interactive and has to work in different devices. But it has to not to be annoying. So it, it, it can't be just, you know, event driven. So if you do the same thing five times, he answers the same thing five times. So it's, it's, it's quite complicated. Um, and the 777 has a lot, of, um, a lot of electronic checklists. Now, electronic checklist is an awesome thing. So if you do the, everything correctly, you never read them. So uh, I was taught when I was, uh, I was doing my typewriting that you need to wait to not to push the checklist until the flaps are 30, because then when you push the, the button, it will be all green, and all you have to say is checklist complete. Um, but then again, you might, you might push it before, and then you have to actually check it. And the idea is that you have the first officer and you have the captain, and the captain calls for a checklist. The first officer reads the checklist. The captain checks whatever he reads. And if the item is indeed uh, true, he says whatever it's supposed to be. So on, off, out, or as needed, and a lot of callouts. And the idea is to make all of, that, all of those voices work so you hear this music in the cockpit when, when everything happens as, as it should. This thing just clicks, and then you, you hear all of those callouts. And again, this is something I wish I would, I, I, I would have when I went through the training. Uh, of course, those of you who have the 5.7 or 6.7, you know that we have this assistant where you can ask the, 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 the first officer or a non-existent first officer there to perform something for you. So there are procedures that you can just say, okay, do that. This came out a long time ago uh, from the fact that I wanted a, to start the plane automatically. Because I needed, I couldn't save the situation like I could now, and then I made those 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 commands that that would just go through the checklist and, and do them, and then it became a feature, and now it's integrated, and you can have the first officer do all your procedures for you, and he will actually tell you what he does. So he will say electrical pump on, hydraulic pump off, uh, and, and will perform all of that. Okay, uh, this is a screenshot from the cockpit, from X-Plane 11. Um, this has not been posted, so we, 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 it's, it's still not complete, but this is our cockpit. This is basically everything I have to say, uh, except that uh, I said that we are working on new sounds. I don't know how this is going to work. Here's a sample of the engines, and let's see if you can guess which engine are we making first. Ideas? Well, it, this is on the GE95 engine, and uh, it's actually quite good. You can, if, if you listen to the real engine, it sounds, uh, it sounds pretty, pretty much like that. And this is semi-generated, so it's, it's not recorded from a real plane. Um, yeah, we have an exciting new guy working on the sounds, and we'll see how that works out with, with everything else. For the sounds in the cockpit, we have recordings of every switch. Uh, every fan, we have recordings from inside the E&E &E compartment. Uh, so I will not tell you the name of the mechanic who is helping us, because that's probably illegal. All right, uh, you, you have any questions? 
We have a couple questions online, and then we could probably take one from the audience. That's all we have time for. Sure. Uh, so this was submitted by Luke. Um, is the maintenance uh, statuses of your aircraft unique to each livery you fly? Or is it uh, universal to all aircraft? Um, and will that carry over to all airplanes, uh, irrespective of what, of what livery you're flying? At the moment, the maintenance pages are written by us into the plane, so they are not configurable. It is a nice thought, uh, which I will take under consideration. OK. Uh, this is from Greg. Uh, is there a danger that sophisticated aircraft, such as this, uh, requiring a high level of systems management, becomes a flight sim standard, um, hence alienating many simmers? I don't know if there's a danger, but clearly most simmers at least say that they want more sophistication. Again, the idea of those models is to not try to simulate the depth of systems to a point of where the pilot doesn't care anymore, just to give more experience. So I don't think there's a danger. I think that the market is quite big and you have, you have simmers who would like to fly at Cessna and you have a simmer who would like to fly at the 777. You have simmers who want the immersion and it's important for them. And you have simmers who want something else. The market is big, a lot of companies. Um, we chose to go this way. So I don't think it will, I don't think that everybody will, will now do, the, do this the same way. So no, no, I don't think there's a danger of that. All right, uh, the last question online, uh, the changes you were talking about, uh, will they encompass other aircraft other than the 777? Uh, for example, the A350 and the A320? So at the moment, we are talking about the 777, a new version of the 777. So basically zero lines of code from the old plane are being used. So this is built from the start, from the ground up, and the 7.8. Um, the Airbuses are a different story. There are, I've answered a lot of questions about that today. There are, so the A320 is, is now being updated every eight, 10 weeks. There is this new process that we have, so the team uh, can stay on their toes. This was actually their idea. Uh, the A350, we are still working out how that, how that will continue. Uh, and as for the other Boeings, I, I, I can't say at the moment, but logically, if and when we come up with new versions, we will most probably make them to the same level. So it's kind of a question whether I, can I get a type rating on the 757? <laughs> probably not. All right, and uh, one question from uh, Nate from Atlanta here. Is it okay if I ask two questions? Sure. Okay. Um, first of all, you said you can configure the cabins however you want. And as I'm sure this is usual with Flight Factor, there'll be a 3D animated cabin. Will that cabin change based off of what you've configured it? Or is it just set as it normally would be? So there is a guy who is hopefully watching this now in uh, Ukraine who, <laughs> who is modeling the, the cabin. And, re and he really wishes that I say no. So... Um, I can't promise you that this will be a one-to-one -one match because I'm not sure we can actually do that at the moment. That will kind of depend on those guys from Lamina. Because if we have to bake in shadows, then doing it will, 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 would be enormous. It would be an enormous job. We would practically have, need to have about 50 different models of the whole fuselage sitting somewhere in the background. It's just too much. If we can get around that, then yes, it will be. One thing I really want, uh, 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 at least, at least what I want to have is that if you choose a cabin which has no first class and you go back there, there is no first class. So we might, we might be, you know, might have a, an incorrect number of rows or something like that. But that will really depend on what we can do. The aim is certainly to do what you, what you, what you said, is just to have it correct. Okay, and then my second question is just the obvious sum. Um, can you give us any idea on release date or price? Uh, I promise you that we will release it as soon as it's almost ready. Because this, of course it will never be ready. No, no, I, I, I really don't want to lie. So at every point when, when, I, when I, with things that I talked about, they were not really, I didn't really know that I can do them. I always said, okay, I'll try. So we, the aim is, so I don't want to say any dates. I made this mistake once many years ago. I said that we are going to have citizen stars in one year. 
on a A350, and it's, it took us three and a half. There were reasons for that. I talked, I had an interview a couple of weeks ago about it, but I still lied to people. I said, I'm gonna do it. So we are working on this almost exclusively. So almost all the time, if most of the team goes into those two planes at the moment. And as you can see from the screenshots, uh, many things are ready, but, um, but yeah, I, it's, it's, it's not. And price-wise, I really don't know. We'll, we'll see how it works. It, I doubt that it will be somewhere, uh, you know, not in the ballpark of whatever this, this, our models are usually are. So it will not cost $1,000. Right. Thank you very much, Roman. Thank you.